Welcome aboard everyone, this is LHI Magic, we're playing Rule of the Waves 2, continuing our tutorial with Great Britain. Today we're going to focus on the battle system, commanding your, your fleet in battle. Alright, so there's a few things though that need to be discussed when going to war. I've taken our, germ, our game with Britain and I've advanced it to the point where we're at war with Germany. You can see we're at war, it says it, red tension marker. And uh, another thing, we've got the B under there, that means that we have Germany blockaded. We look at the map and see the, the force display. We have enough tonnage above the amount that Germany has so that we're able to blockade them. That'll give us victory points each turn, so it's a good thing if you can get it going. Next thing you want to do uh, when you go to well, when you get the message that you're going to work, the th one thing you want to do is set your intel level, f intel effort higher for that country. A high intel effort will improve the battle generator's um, estimate of enemy forces and decrease the chances of you having uh, battles where you're at a great disadvantage. All right, um, you can see in war results, we're, we've been, I've run a few turns just to make sure we're get into the battle, maybe to show you some stuff. So we've got victory point, each side has their victory points. Uh, next thing is trade protection and anti-submarine warfare. So you, during a war, you want to have units on trade protection. If I scroll down, you can see these Elmsgrath. Corvettes are on trade protection, and that those just operate in and around your home country, defending your merchants from enemy ships. You have to have at least as many as it lacks. So we have 19 of 12. Nothing wrong with having extras. That, uh, that just gives you more units that might make reports or things like that. All right, next thing you want to do is... Make sure all your ships are mobilized. Mine already were because I was at war, but make sure they're all mobilized. That's going to give you a good hit to your budget. And then you're ready to move forward. Um, so let's go for a turn. We should get a, uh, when we hit the turn marker, we should get a battle description box. So let's do that. All right, here we go. Okay, this is a cruiser battle, and uh, if you look on the display, it gives you an overview map. The cross is where that battle is going to take place. In this case, it's a little closer to Germany. Um, the Baltics there, than Germany there, uh, than us, but not a bad place. And the closer you are to your home country, the more opportunity you might have to use uh, your own coastal batteries minefields, or have a chance that damaged ships could could uh, make it to port before the battle ends, thus keeping them from sinking. So that's a consideration. All right, the next thing, enemy is Germany. Gives you general location. Battle size shows our forces in the area and the enemy estimate of the enemy forces. So we're pretty close to parity here in that area. And then... It says if you accept battle, if you decline, you give the enemy 510 victory points. So I'm going to accept this battle. All right, it's perfect for the tutorial. The German Navy declines it. Okay, so we accepted, they declined. We're going to get 600 victory points. So we say, okay, we should get another battle. All right, convoy defense. This one's located off of Ireland. This is a tough mission. We have to defend the convoy. They're attacking it. Normally, I might say no to that. So we say yes to that battle. All right. When you start the battle, it'll it'll zoom in to your main formation. In this case, the destroyer grasshopper. Mouse wheel will zoom out the map. Left click lets you move the map. You can zoom out all the way to see the whole world. If you wanted to, I don't know why, but 
I guess it's an interesting feature. Other units, as we said, will be marked with a uh, flag. It, if you have any control over them, your force has control over them, you'll be able to do something by right-clicking. If not, it'll just tell you they're under AI control. This is the uh, convoy division. Back to ours. All right, so before we talk more about this, let's go through the rest of the items on the interface, and then we'll come back to the main map display. All right, at the very top, we'll go through the ribbon. You've got a save game button. You've got an end game button. You can't end the game until at least 400 ticks or half the battle has gone through. If I click this, it'll tell me at least half the battle in a minimum of 400 minutes. So 400 turns must pass. All right. Number of turns is down at the very bottom on the bottom dis uh, display ribbon and tells you time elapsed is the same as turns. We The battle is designed to last 500. It could go a little longer if ships are still in sight. It'll continue. But right now we've done zero turns. All right, next thing is preferences. I'm going to zoom my ships in more so we can see. All right, next thing is preferences. First off is when does the game stop and give you information? And that's all these items. You can choose when to pause on hits, pause on identification, pause on open fire. Uh, flotation warnings, all, all kinds of stuff. That's it's up to you how you want to balance the game. It will run slower because it'll get interrupted more, but you'll it will ensure that you don't have something that you miss that causes uh, that causes you to miss something and maybe have a bad something bad outcome. All right, next thing is the realism settings. We've talked about those before. We're playing in admiral's mode, so we can only control our main force. Rear Admiral's mode, you can control your main force and anyone that's in signal range. Then Captain's mode, you can control anyone. Um, this is that support force. We had that checked, so that's why those showed up. And uh, it's the same as the, the display in the main, or the, the preferences in the main. Additionally, you have uh, sound and video, we get the deck colors for the various units, have those set. Uh, display options here, these are the ones that are giving us this display the way we want it. And there's another option up that we'll be able to see. But uh, show damage meter, that's that little green meter underneath this, our friendly ship. Force indicators are those arrows, show the direction that our friendly ship is going to, or that our ships are moving. Map scale, that's down in the center on the map. We could add flags, which would put that British flag on each unit. We don't have to because we know who they are already. Uh, we can show a compass if we wanted, which would show up up here. Doesn't really matter. And we show base flags, so we do show the flags for the bases. That we, that we do want. All right. Sound. I don't find the sound to be very enticing in this. I usually turn it off, especially the background sound. It basically just uh, makes different noises for different level of weather. We're going to skip that, or not skip it, but I leave it at none and no sound. All right, next thing, you've got your different zoom levels. So instead of using the mouse wheel, you can click one of those to zoom as well. Next thing is a lock, which will lock the view to the selected division so that that division would stay in the screen and everything would move now relative to it sometimes in long chases especially individual ship against individual ship it's worth it to lock it to that display so it's not driving off your screen constantly all right next thing is your various ranges turn all those off and your range rings, first your sighting range, and because it's at night, we have a pretty low 3,500 meter sighting range. Second 
is your range of your main guns of of your uh, main guns so you can see even this lowly destroyer can shoot much further than it can see so it'll never shoot out that far the third ring the blue ring is the range of your torpedoes and you can see why night uh, night fights are dangerous because our torpedo range is almost the same as our sighting and so that's where destroyers can get in on capital ships and loose destroy uh, torpedoes on them before they can have a lot of reaction time so that's what makes that dangerous all right we also have two more radar range and air range but without those in we don't we have no aircraft right now next thing is show fire lines we'll see when we engage that will cause lines to go between the selected division and whatever its target is so you know what it's shooting at next thing is showing this enlarged inset view down here that will just display the lead ship of whatever formation you have selected you can see damage on that things like that it's it's just nice to know it, it will help you because if you inadvertently click on a destroyer division but expected to get your carriers that's just another way to check uh, and you know just gives you a quick check to make sure so that's nice to have on division names you can turn on and off you can set it to basically you can add that division name you can turn on and off the ship names you can turn on and off reports turn off the base flags turn off the objectives but uh, I normally leave it that with the ship names and you also have another option with you can with ship names if they're displayed you can tell them only display type if you want to uh, decrease it only capital ships types but not destroyers or none if you don't care I tend to like all tend to like to see the name of my ships that's part of the RP is you know you design these ships and build them maybe you built a special ship and named it after somebody you want to see how their their ship does all right the next section is moving the games the game turns along first block will do one turn go ahead and click that which will be uh, just one turn which is about one minute next will be five minutes next will be run a number of hours and you can select how many hours you want the game to run the next one is run continuously so it will run until one of those items from your preferences clicks off the game will continue and you while it's running in any of these you can hit pause to stop it game will operate at different speeds all the way down from real time and we'll do a one turn in real time to show you how slow that is and this is just going to take forever so I'm going to see if I can stop it no I can't maybe I can speed it up yep okay so I was able to speed it up and somewhere in the middle of that turn we caught an unknown ship okay so we'll leave that for now we probably want it on slow you can either use the pull down or use the arrows to adjust the game speed this te this button will use the fastest game speed available more for when you when you feel you finished and you're retiring from an engagement that's where you use that to go to you know not waste your personal time while you're uh, while you're ending the game next you get a display a pictorial display of the weather it's overcast next thing is a clock that will uh, click on that it'll tell you how long until either sunrise or sunset so right now it's night dawn will be in five hours and 45 minutes next is the view all log entries so this will show you everything right now you can see we have a log report the grasshopper sights an unknown ship 
game was auto-saved, and the grasshopper sites an unknown ship. This will grow as the game grows. We'll get more interesting log events. Next, you can pull up an almanac and look at a country if you want it, same as in the main, as in the strategic portion of the game. Next three items have to do with aircraft, so we're going to ignore those for now. When we, if we progress this turn to aircraft, this game to aircraft, we'll uh, I'll do another one on aircraft. And then finally, you have a uh, a question mark which will show you the shortcuts that you can use for uh, for the game. All right. On the left-hand side, you've got an order of battle. Shows the order battle of your force and any other forces that are attached and other forces that are around available are, are, are around. So we've got the merchants. We've got the support force, which consists of one destroyer. You can go through and look at that, get information. We've got the log, which we saw. Any reports, which would be other ships. So, for example, if this destroyer up here sighted somebody, we'd get a sighting report from them. And if we had an objective, that would be up there. Uh, objectives are things like uh, destroy land target or sink X number of ships, things like that. All right, going down to the bottom from there on the bottom left this is where you can st stay in the map and set your course speed and other information for the division that you're currently controlling you can also give it a target if it had one since we're since this target is unidentified we're unable to at this stage do anything with it all right so what we're going to do is we're going to go to squad max. That will automatically take it to your max. You can go 20, cruise, or you can set any speed that you'd like up to what the squad can do. So we're going to set it for squad max. We want them to speed up, avoid any torpedoes, make it harder for them to be hit. All right. Along the bottom we talked about, you've got the position of the battle, the time. The elapsed time, so we've gone through two turns. The local time, which might be a little different than the, this is your country's time. And, and then this distance, you can see it changes. This is the distance from the selected unit to the cursor. So we can, if we put it over this unknown ship, we can see because of the fact this night, we didn't cite them until they were already moving in they're going pretty fast and we saw them about 2200 2300 yards away to control the direction of your ship you can either we talked about you can either use this and change the course you can select the arrow which will give them a course or you've got two hotkeys one hotkey is the shift key anywhere you click that's going to be where that force goes. Or you can control and click. And if you control and click, it will go until that ship reaches that point. So you don't want to control click too far. I'll do a control click for a short one. We want to go south and intercept this guy. So that's what we'll start. All right. That's pretty much how it works. Um, that's the, that's the interface. <clears throat> At least that's that's the interface, and now we'll play out a little of the battle and uh, see how it goes. Now I want to make a note. the The game is kind of a gray. I wonder, actually, maybe I could change that in preferences uh, if I made the water a different color. It might look. I wonder if I make the water white. Eh, it's still kind of grayish. Um, I was trying to. Uh, what I'm trying to do is get 
what I was trying to do is is to get rid of that uh, spackling we have. That's because of the uh, that's because it's uh, night and overcast. It's put in a cloud view, but it makes it render the, the real display looks. What I'm saying is the real display looks a lot better than you don't get these uh, these dots that you get, especially after after I render the video. It will really uh, um, it, the uh, the term is anyway. It will. So I'm just trying to get rid of these dots. All right. So you can hit spacebar to get one turn to pass. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to turn a little more toward these guys. All right. They are one of them's a light cruiser. Still haven't identified the first one. To see what your units are, right click on the display, it'll show you an overview of that unit. The grasshopper is currently speed 17, no damage, no flooding. Got four torpedoes. And another place to set your force and speed for your, cell, your unit or for your force. We could let the AI take over this formation if we want. We're not going to. We are going to select flotilla attack. We're going to try to get the rest of our forces to make torpedoes attack, torpedo attacks on these guys. Now this is the other force we have. You can see its lead formation is Destroyer Division 2. That's the Grasshopper. And they're in a support role. Notice we don't have flotilla attack. We don't have its AI control is grayed out. We, because we're in admiral's mode, we have much less that we can do. All right. Going back to the main force, right-clicking on that and double-clicking will give us a overview of that unit. Uh, in this case, it's the grasshopper. You can see the, the guns in this display will be turned towards whatever they're, they're targeting. It'll give you your turrets. We've got one main gun. That's it. Uh, it'll give you the data about those guns. Okay, we can go through 1.7 inches of armor at 5,000 yards. So these cruisers... These light cruisers are probably two, two and a half inches, so maybe super close like this we might be able to get, get through. All right, we fired one round in deliberate fire, have not hit anything yet, but we can see our percentage chance to hit is down to 3.2, to 2%. We can get the details on this, and, re and remember we talked about, uh, back in the original tutorial, we talked about training and how much value it has. Uh, this gives our overview, and we'll see where that training fits in. So they're 800 yards away. Basic chance to hit is 21%. Our crew quality is zero, so no benefit. Target size is smaller than a capital ship, so minus 20. Aspect, minus 20. Uh, local control, no benefit there. Tech level, minus 10. If we had the crew advantage... Uh, training the gunnery training for our crew we would add a 10 there so it would it would offset some of these negative advantages all right uh, one ship's fouling the range target ship turning 40 target sighting level smoke interference again might be a wind issue uh, we're firing a DD it's at night so our final chance to hit is 3.22 from 21% it's pretty bad, uh, but that tells you what's going on. Log entries, if we had any log entries for the grasshopper, they would go here. All right. We're not able to fire torpedoes ourselves. That's an AI function. In captain's mode, you can take the ship and fire torpedoes, but in admiral's mode, you just have to hope that they choose to fire one when uh, when they can. All right, so 
it looks like it's a light cruiser and a destroyer. Oh, more ships down there. I was just going to say, we're shooing those away from the merchants, but we need to keep everybody clear, so we got to get interpose ourselves. All right, there we go. We got them to turn away. Remember, they, that's out of sighting range. Sighting range is only this. So if we keep them this far away, we've done our job. They're trying to get in there, and we're trying to keep them out. Okay, the merchants have moved now, not quite all the way up there, but they are moving north. Just, just a general. All right, some torpedoes. Oh, Basilisk was rammed. That's bad. But we had two torpedoes in the water. Let's see if we take any hits. Nope, that one missed. That one missed. All right, the good thing is that's going to take that cruiser out of the picture for a little while. The bad thing is, we're probably going to lose that destroyer. Alright, at this point, if we can just keep these guys away from the convoy, it was here, and now it's supposedly there, so it's somewhere over here. As long as we can keep those fellas away from the convoy, we will prevail. Although those look like they're trying to get in on it. If they spot it, then... And it's definitely a problem. Basilisk is back moving. Let's take a good look at Basilisk here. Okay, it's uh, took some flotation damage, some structural damage. Its maximum speed is 12, but it is still capable of of maneuvering. We'll keep it. We'll we'll keep it on the fleet. Eventually we're going to get a symbol saying you'll have to slow down this formation to 12 knots because he can't keep up. But right now we're okay. All right, let's run for five minutes. Try to get those guys away from the, And now you saw it stop because of basically a sighting report of those ships. All right, there's the merchants, very bad. So they got they got sight of the merchants. Now it's just a matter of keeping them away and hoping we can keep our their other forces away. That says light cruisers, but I think it's just misidentified. I think they're actually destroyers. All right, we want to continue to keep them away from the transports as much as possible. In this case, the slow basilisk is going to be beneficial. As long as we keep them away, it'll act as a uh, tripwire. So we've got kind of a scout out here. All right, I don't want to give up too much initiative, but I want to make sure I know where the uh, where the enemy is. All right, Basilisk tried to reconnect. Let's see if get that display regarding uh, they can't keep up. Now, one thing you can do if you have an, an, a damaged ship, you go to the order of battle. You can see Basilisk one tick. So Nith took some some damage. We can see they took a little flotation and some structure damage. Basilisk has uh, taken more damage. We could, in this case, detach her and send her home to a friendly base. Uh, it's probably the prudent thing because with that damage, a bulkhead could could rupture and she could... And she could take extra damage. But we will send her away. All right. Now, for us, it's just a matter of keeping them off the convoy. That's the most important spot. All right. Baslux is heading home. All 
I guess they might not have seen the convoy. Maybe they went they went the wrong way. If that's if that's the truth, this is a good thing. We're gonna speed this up to fast. Okay, that's a destroyer. That's that merchant convoy. Here's those merchants somewhere around here. It gives a general location, not the direct specific location. Okay, Basilisk is making, making their way home. We just spotted another friendly force. Oh, okay, here's the merchants. All right. We're going to slow down to cruise again, keep our stokers. Happy and all we're trying to do. All right, sun came up, sun is coming up. Still overcast, so we're getting that. That display. All right, opposing forces are far apart. Do you want to end the scenario? Yep, okay, I definitely do. All right, after the battle, you get a battle display. First thing, top part is your side on the left, enemy side on the right. It'll list all ships that took place and how much damage they took. So we had one medium damage. That was the Basilisk, I'm sure. Two light damage and uh, five that didn't get damaged for a total of eight destroyers in the battle there were nine corvettes in the area and 19 auxiliaries none of them none of the transports were hit the germans had five destroyers total one took light damage if you had any aircraft it would be here all right so they damaged we damaged 87 points worth of ships or and they damaged 280, 240 points worth of ship damage. So they definitely beat us in ship score. However, there's objective bonuses. And they were supposed to sink six transports. They didn't, so they lost points. We were supposed to, if we kept all of ours alive, so we got a big bonus for that. Uh, if we had had survivors, that would have come in. And aircraft losses and so we took a big big total points for a victory even though there wasn't too much that went on all right we can look at the different ships it'll show it'll sort by damage sunk first if if the uh so you can take a look at what happens to a ship and that's where you can go and if you want to read the log entries okay they launched a torpedo they were rammed by a destroyer. Uh, that, so that was a destroyer, not a light cruiser. And uh, they took some hits. They restored electrical power, and then they were detached. So you can get an idea of what happens to each vessel if you want. Another thing you can do now, these weren't available before, but you can show the tracks of all the ships in the uh, fight. So we got in that fight there. We we had the ramming. We took some damage. Then we kind of went off to defend the formation. And they just harried off to the south. They'd had enough after that, I guess. All right. And when you're done, just select end game. And leave the scenario, and you get your victory points total. So we got 870, they got 50. Pretty good for the first one. All right, then there'll be any um, any of your normal turn events. Periscopes, not too bad. Followed by, during the war, a submarine and raider warfare summary. No subs are working, but the German raider first Bismarck sank two... British merchant ships in Northern Europe. Okay, they get 10 victory points for that. We got 220 for that blockade, so that was a good thing for us. 
we could if we wanted put a unit on anti-radar we've got a lot of our cruisers on foreign service um, if we wanted to add another cruiser maybe we could put one on radar in northern Europe which might thwart that radar but it takes us out of, it takes it out of our active fleet so it, you have to balance I think it's I'd rather have it in the active fleet you know would they get 10 or 15 victory points it's not causing too much trouble right now all right let's go to another turn to see uh, well actually you know what I think we're going to stop here now that I think about it because we got to see them uh, decline a battle and then we got to see a battle that they accepted and we saw how that battle works and how the battle interface works from there it would be just me playing the game and I'm already doing that with Italy so I think we'll stop right now once again everybody thank you for watching this is LHI Magic. If you like what you see, uh, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll get some more content up there. More of uh, everyone's favorite spreadsheet game, Rule the Waves.